Hi guys, I'm Yogita Kandilwal and in this lesson we are going to deal with reproduction in organisms. Uh, we are starting with introduction. For more lessons, follow me on Unacademy and here's the link for the same. Reproduction, that is to produce. So, reproduction is basically a biological process. So, a process in which organism gives rise to offspring similar to itself. So, in reproduction, a new individual organism, that is the offspring, is produced by the parents. And also, reproduction is a very fundamental process in biology. And all the living organisms are existing as a result of reproduction because reproduction gives rise to new uh, offsprings, new individuals. So, all the organisms are uh, here because of result of reproduction. So, it is a very fundamental process and thus we, uh, helps in distinguish between living and non-living. Reproduction is affected by. So, there are, uh, there are various factors which affects reproduction, some of which are organisms' habitat. So, it is very important in which habitat the organism is living, its internal physiology. So, uh, re uh, for reproduction, it is re uh, required that the organism should be mature. So, what is the internal physiology? There are proper balance of horm hormones or not for the organism to reproduce. So, uh, that affects the reproduction and several other factors that include breeding season, nutrition availability and so on. So, this is a picture of a, a calanchoe leaf and see from the margins here, this is the bud arising which will give rise to new individual. So, uh, as the organism uh, produces new offspring, so it gives birth to new offspring, then that offspring grows and mature and in turn produces the offspring. So, there is cycle of birth, growth and death and uh, the organism is produced, then it grows or matures and in turn gives rise to offsprings and then it eventually die. So, this growth has various phases. So, phases of growth. First is juvenile phase. It is also called as pre-pubertal phase. So, this phase is uh, from the uh, birth of the child till the, uh, the organism attains sexual maturity. So, period of growth to attain sexual maturity. And in humans, it is generally of 10 to 14 years. Uh, and next is reproductive phase. It is the phase in which the organism reproduces. So, uh, after in juvenile phase, it attains sexual maturity after which it is capable to reproduce. So, that is the reproductive phase. Now, in humans, uh, female generally have, uh, female reproductive phase is generally from uh, 10 to 14 years till, uh, say, uh, 40 to 50 years, depending upon menstrual cycle. And in human males, it is from uh, 10 to 14 years till infinity. There is no end of reproductive phase in human males. Then the last phase of growth is senescence. That is uh, concomitant changes like slowing of metabolism. So in senescence, the uh, body function deteriorates, the organ function deteriorates, there is slowing of metabolism and we can see here for loss of vision, loss of hearing and so on and it eventually leads to the death of organism. Now, these phases of growth are regulated by. Now, these phases of growth, how they are regulated? First is interaction of hormones. So, there are variety of hormones. Say in plants, we have five hormones, auxin, gibberellins, ethylene, abscisic acid, cytokinin, which regulates these phases of growth. And say in humans, we have growth hormone that regulates the growth of the individual. And then for reproduction, we have gonadotropins, uh, one is gonadotropin releasing hormone which releases gonadotropins that is 
uh, LHN FSS which regulates the reproductive phase in humans. Then we have environmental factors. Now uh, the growth is also regulated by environmental factors as the organisms grow and reproduce only in favorable conditions. So what is the environment of the individual in, it, in which it is growing? So it's very important. Next is lifespan. So uh, there is certain certainty of life of every individual. So uh, duration between birth and natural death of an organism is the lifespan. So uh, the period in which the individual is born till natural death. Now this will not include any accidental death. There are a variety of accidental deaths. So it includes birth and natural death. Its important feature is that it has no definite relation with body size. No matter what. Uh, so for example we can see in crow and parrot they are almost same in size but uh, their lifespan varies. Uh, then we can also see in mango and people tree they are almost of same size but mango tree has a very short lifespan as compared to people tree. Now here are some examples of lifespan. Butterfly lives for 1 to 2 weeks, crocodile for 60 years, tortoise for 100 to 50 years. Lifespan is not correlated with the body size of organism as we have already told parrot and crow. They are almost of same size but parrot lives for 140 years and crow lives just for 15 years. So it is a key feature that lifespan is not related to the body size of organism. Now uh, since every individual has to die, there is natural death but so no individual is immortal except single celled organisms. It is very important line no individual is immortal except single celled organism. Now, why the exception is single-celled organisms? So, let's consider an example. Uh, amoeba divides by binary fission. Amoeba is single-celled organism. It divides by binary fission. Now, in binary fission, what happens? Uh, a cell uh, divides into, that is the parent cell, divides into two daughter cells. Now, uh, the cell, uh, first, there is nuclear division, then cytoplasmic division, and thus, two daughter cells new daughter cells are produced. So there is no leftover of the parent. The parent itself divides into two. So we can't uh, define the mortality of the parent. There is no remains of the parent left. So there is just simply uh, the parent goes and becomes in the two daughter cells. That's why there is no uh, we can't uh, define death in single celled organisms. Then we have types of reproduction uh, on the basis of how many organisms or individuals are involved. Asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction and parthenogenesis. In asexual we have single, uh, single parent while in sexual we have two. So we will deal in detail in our upcoming lessons about these types of reproduction. So that's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching.